Hey everyone, I'm Ultima456, you're the Ultimates, and welcome to episode 134 of Let's Platinum Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair. Actually, I set that program for Chihiro to discover if she happened to be one of the final five survivors. I feel so sad and empty that my preparation was a waste, but I'm going to think, think about it positively. The word retreat doesn't exist in Monokuma's dictionary. Nervousness began to grip the students as Monokuma continued to uh, continue talking in his relaxing, uplifting voice. Now then, it looks like everyone's here, including Toko, who's still tied up in her room. So let's start the heart-throbbing excitement special graduation exam. A heart-throbbing exciting special graduation exam, huh? The students broke out in noisy confusion, but Monokuma ignored them and kept talking. Don't think about it too hard. Relax, relax. Change Elax to Uppert for all I care. I'll sp still be the m most adorable bear here. <laughs> like Rupert, Rupert bear. Take out Elax from R and put R Uppert and you get Rupert. <laughs> Yakya, visibly annoyed with Monokuma's nonsensical ramblings, shouted, I already know it's you, Junko. Stop this stupid game and show yourself. Oh my, don't you know? If you want to lure the mastermind out of her heavenly hidey hole, you need to bring a worthy sacrifice. You're not worthy enough at all. Do you really think the mastermind would show herself with your pathetic hope and despair? <laughs> he roared maniacally, uh, sorry, manically, then began to explain the special graduation exam. If you pass my exam, everyone will graduate. But if you fail, you'll be held back for a whole year. I'll reset your memories, give you a fresh new lease on life, and you'll reintroduce yourselves at the start of the school year again. They say people's lives don't come with reset buttons, but I'm not a people. Whether it's soft resets or hard resets, I can do as I please. Yasuhiro seemed confused, but the other students knew what Monokuma meant by reset. He was going to force them to relive their school lives once again. As Yasuhiro struggled to understand, Tucker pointed out pointed at a nearby monitor and shouted, Stop this already. No matter what you do to us, we'll never commit murder. These past few days should have already made that clear to you. What was that? Jumped Monokuma. Are you serious? Of course. No one here would ever take another human being's life for any reason. As Taka shouted, one of the students, a pale-faced girl standing apart from the others, looked away. It was Sayaka. As she trembled, a voice popped up from behind her. What do you think, Sayaka? She couldn't even turn around from sheer terror, but Sayaka knew. She knew Monokuma was standing right behind her. Do you really think none of you will become a killer? Monokuma leaned towards Sayaka and asked her a question only she could hear. By the way, Sayaka, why did you go to Makoto's room when nothing strange had happened yet? Did you two have an inappropriate relationship? What would your fans think if they found out you made a move on a boy by sneaking into his room? Or were you there for some other reason? I... I... She could barely make a sound, much less scream, as her trembling worsened. Monokuma had nothing to gain by cornering Sayaka and toying with her emotions like this. He simply wanted to see the young singer fall into despair over her true character. And for that reason, Monokuma did not relent. Hey, hey, what were you trying to do to your close friend you've known for the past few years? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Her determination from last night blended with the memories Makoto had recounted and ate away at Sayaka's mind like a disease. As her mind began to rip itself apart, she fell to her knees. A clear ball flying at just under 105 miles per hour struck Monokuma in the mouth with enough force to sink into his face. The speaker in Monokuma's mouth was immediately destroyed as his body rolled into a wall and stopped moving. Sayaka came to her senses and looked where the ball came flying from. She saw Leon breathing heavily as he stared intensely at Monokuma. Yasuhiro grabbed him and yelled, Ah, oh, dude! Why did you do that, Leon? That crystal ball is really valuable. Leon had stolen Yasuhiro's crystal ball and thrown it at Monokuma. That Monokuma bastard was trying to take Sayaka hostage. What was I supposed to do? Dude, that crystal ball cost me two trillion dollars. Two trillion! They don't even print that much money anymore. Oh, bullcrap. Besides, if the world is all screwed up, what the hell are you going to need money for anyway? But if it's safe out there, I'll just join the major leagues or whatever and pay you back. Uh, well, I could pay you back doing something else besides baseball. As those two argued, Sayaka fell to her knees. Hey, shouted Leon, running toward her. Sayaka, are you okay? She looked at him and stared blankly. Leon. She made up her mind and she raised her head as she said, Um, there's something I need to confess to you later. What? Seriously? Sayaka was staring at Leon so intensely that he briefly forgot about the current situation. Not just to you, but to Makoto and the others too. Sayaka had made up her mind to confess the sin that was weighing heavily on her heart, but Leon seemed not to hear the latter half of her remark. He ran back to the others, slapped Fumi and Yasuhiro on their backs and shouted, all right, everyone, let's ace this exam or whatever and get out of here already. There's no way I'm going to let my happy memories of this place get taken away. The monocom inside the monitor responded. Fine, fine. Now that things are finally coming to a boil, let's start the graduation exam. Sakura, 
who, who had been outside the dormitory, suddenly appeared with some information. The monochumers in the hallway are acting peculiar. The students all moved to the main building to see what Sakura was talking about. They saw There they saw 50 monochumers standing in two rows along the walls of the hallway, and one standing at the very end of the hall. There was something strange on top of this monochumer's head. An enlarged version of the escape button that Makoto had obtained from the mono, mono machine. As each student took in this sight, an announcement rang throughout the school. The me at the end of the hall has a button on the top of his head that'll open the main entrance. You'll have 15 seconds to get that button, and if you do, I'll let you have it in place of a diploma. The students seemed surprised by the straightforward explanation. Only Celeste remained calm, and she asked Monokuma with a bored look on her face. Of course, it is not as simple as running up and taking it, is it? Oh ho 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 ho, how mean. Do I look like the kind of headmaster that would interfere with his students' graduation? Forget the gunfire salutes, I'm going to send my graduates off with some fireworks. 100 fireworks to be exact, enough for 20 seconds of hardcore partying. The more perceptive students immediately realised what he was talking about. The bombs installed inside each Monokuma. They would explode one after the other, filling the hallway with fire as soon as time started. After 15 seconds, the me standing at the back of the hall is going to sacrifice himself to give you guys one final firework. By the way, this probably isn't important, but that button isn't very durable. Hoo 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 hoo! This graduation exam was Monokuma's way of saying that he had no intention of letting anyone leave. It was clear from the explosion the students saw during the entrance exam that the halls of Hope's Peak Academy would be bathed in fire. Even if someone was lucky enough to survive the explosions, the burns on their body alone would, have, would be enough to send them into a fatal shock. Their lungs might be completely incinerated by the scorched air before that. Even if they sacrificed one student to run through, the odds were low that they would even succeed. But there was no reason for every student to run in at once either, and a shadow of despair fell upon their faces. Nice. Very nice. I always wanted to take a picture, so I have those faces as a souvenir. As Monokuma laughed from behind the monitor, Sakura stepped forward. I'll do it. I have only seen the explosion once, but I believe I'm capable of withstanding its power. No, shouted Aoi, you can't. Even if you couldn't even if you even you couldn't handle a hundred of those explosions. Sakura shook her head. I'm the only one who even has a chance. Suddenly, Mondo remembered the motorcycle he parked inside the dormitory and said, Hold up, that motorcycle might be fast enough to go through those explosions. I'll do it. Don't be hasty, urged Sakura. Even if the motorcycle is unharmed by the exp explosions, that doesn't mean its rider will be. As Sakura and the others continued their debate, one person stepped toward the hallway lined with Monokumas. I'll do it. M Mukuro, screamed Makoto weakly. <laughs> it's supposed to say Mukuro, but they put Makuro. Mukuro, with her back facing Makoto, turned her head to the side slightly and gave him a small nod. She knew it would come to this. She knew why Monokuma would pose such an impossible exam. Junko is already looking forward to the next despair game. She's going to erase everyone's memories, including mine. She just wants to tor torment us and fill us with despair before that happens. But Mukuro knew her sister's personality all too well, and that's why she was confident. She knew that the escape button was real. Whenever Junko brought despair to the others, she always made sure that there was a possibility that despair would befall her instead. If the students won this gamble and made it through this horrible situation, they would finally escape to the outside world. That outcome would obviously fill Junko with immense despair. In the same way she left the clue in Monokuma's control program, Junko could not be satisfied until she took pains to assure her own destruction. It was this quality that made Junko the ultimate despair. That's why Mukuro was determined to do it. She knew she was the only person who stood a chance of making that outcome possible, even if she had to risk her life. But right now, Mukuro wanted to live more than anything. She wanted to hold on to this world, a world she had no interest in previously. She didn't even know if this hesitation she felt was disappointing or not. But she wanted to live and continue searching for a new path. A path where she could abandon her submission to despair, where, she'd ex where she could accept the sins of the past and, and continue to live. Mukuro, who was known as a war machine, found her heart beset by overwhelming fear and anxiety. Until now, it had never occurred to her that de determination was necessary to live. As if she was brushing that fear aside, she quietly said, Um, thank you, Makoto. Unfortunately, the words she said to the boy, who showed her new possibilities, never reached his ears. Sakura, however, heard her and frowned as she said, If you're planning to sacrifice yourself to the act of penance, I'll stop you with all my power. Though her words were firm, there was unmistakable affection hidden in them, hiding in them. Both girls had dedicated their lives to battle, and yet Mukuro felt a twinge of jealousy towards Sakura for possessing something she lacked. Mukuro leaned towards Sakura and whispered in her ear, What? Are you serious? As Sakura's frown intensified, Monokuma's voice blared throughout the halls. Alright, I'm going to start the exam now. Ready, set, go. 
There was no time for questions or objections. The frontmost Monokuma exploded, sending a roaring wave of heat throughout the hall. But Mukuro didn't look away. She began moving, powered by resolute determination. Monokuma Room As soon as the graduation exam started, the mastermind focused her control entirely on the Monokuma holding the escape button and completely synchronized her uh, field of vision with it. She knew what was going to happen next. She could predict what her sister Mukuro would do in this exact situation, where she would choose to focus her superhuman skill with weaponry, and so, through Monokuma's eyes, she watched the scene unfold exactly as she had predicted. A pointed metal bar burst through the explosions, heading straight for the weak point of the Monokuma holding the escape button. Specifically, it was aiming for the point where the bomb's detonation system and Monokuma's power source overlapped. It flew straight and true, as if it had been fired by a master archer. In order to bring despair to Monokuma, and by extension Junko as well, the super soldier known as Mukuro Ikusaba threw the pipe like a spear so it could attack the same weak point she had pierced in the nurse's office. As explosions filled the hallway until only fire remained visible, the spear's speed and precision as it soared to its target defied all human logic. But the mastermind knew. She knew Mukuro had used her power to fill the world with despair. Power was all that disappointing girl had. But that power was useless against Monokuma. The mastermind had predicted that Mukuro would put all her effort into that throw, and Monokuma caught the metal bar perfectly between his hands. The force of the throw knocked Monokuma back several yards, but the pointed end of the bar never pierced through his chest. Well, that was disappointing. The mastermind turned to look to a different monitor. She wanted to see the look on Mukuro's face when she realized that she failed to strike Monokuma. The despair of seeing the final Monokuma explode right before her eyes, completely obliterating the, the escape button. She wanted to see this memory of her disappointing sister's final moments as her newfound hope sank into a dark pit of despair. On instinct, she turned her attention to the surveillance camera that hadn't been destroyed, but instead of seeing Mukuro and the others, she only saw Sakura, who looked as though she had finished launching an attack. She only thought it was strange for one second, but then the hopelessly powerful mastermind completely understood the situation and shifted her point of view to Monokuma. But because of that single second, Junko would feel just a pang of despair. Three seconds left. Amid the smoke, flames, and heat encircling the hallway, it burst through with the speed of a cannon shell. It glared at Monokuma with hot, boiling eyes that betrayed the icy expression on its face, and then, sharply, swiftly, strongly, it transformed into a living weapon that cuts through everything, revealing its true form in that hall of despair. Two seconds left. Monokuma, who was still holding the metal bar in his hands, tried to move, but at that exact moment, the living weapon carved a path through the flames and appeared before him. Its body, which had never been wounded on any battlefield, was sustaining all manner of burns and injuries. But even so, it did not falter. The fire in its eyes never flickered once. One second left. The living weapon, Mukuro, slammed her knee into the back of the metal bar Monokuma was holding. The sharp tip of that metal bar pierced through Monokuma like a rail spike, shredding the detonator and, its, and his power source into pieces. Time's up. The 100 explosion ceased and smoke blanketed the hallway. Mukuro had dived into Monokuma and the pristine escape button now rested in her hand. She and the other students of Hope Speak Academy had passed the graduation exam. It was only a small amount of despair. Monokuma had tasted it in only three seconds. First floor hallway, Junko. Mukuro looked down at Monokuma. He could no longer move or self-destruct. When she spoke to him, a static-filled voice emitted from his mouth. It seemed his communication function still worked. <laughs> I never expected you to do that. He still sounded like Monokuma. It seems his voice modulator was unharmed as well. I must have overestimated you. I never thought you'd need anybody's help on the battlefield. When I give the signal, please launch me forward with a roundhouse kick. Mukuro whispered these words to Sakura just before the explosion started. After Mukuro threw the metal bar, she jumped into the air at the exact moment Sakura unleashed a roundhouse kick. Right when Sakura's foot made contact with her own, Mukuro used the force generated by her kick to propel herself at Monokuma. Using the ultimate martial artist's superhuman attack like a springboard, she shot herself through the air like an artillery shell. Enduring intense heat, shrapnel, and blood-draining g-force, she stayed conscious as she charged through the hallway engulfed with explosions and despair. Mukuro trust trusted Junko. She trusted Junko to predict that she'd throw the metal bar and catch it accordingly. Then she'd try to look at her face as, as the despair sets in. Junko and Ashima, she knew, would definitely do that. Although Mukuro hadn't predicted that her, spe that her sister would try to kill her with the spears of Gungni, she had a better understanding of her actions now. As Mukuro stared Monokuma in his face, all he could do was laugh scornfully. You put your life in someone else's hands for a deadly battle. I don't know how I feel about that. You'll always be a half-assed disappointment. I guess this time, I'll just say I lost because I didn't see this much disappointment coming. The end. The end. Mukuro shook her head at Monokuma. 
No, you're wrong, Junko. Huh? If you want to talk about winning or losing, I think we lost, before we even started. Mukuro's eyes shifted from side to side as if she was unsure of something, and she fidgeted in place as she continued to talk. No matter how much despair they felt, you didn't think they'd kill each other the way they were before. That's why you erased their memories. They aren't like the others you forced in the past. You knew these students would never do it. That's what you believed, isn't it? What are you talking about? So, um, it's okay, Junko. I'll bring back everyone's memories someday, and I'll show you everyone's happiness and their bonds. I'll show all that to you, and fill you with even more despair. Mokuro nodded after she said this, as if to cheer her sister up, after several seconds of silence, Monokuma responded. You finally beat me this one time, and that lame speech is the best you can do? You're such a disappointment. You never fill me with despair. It's just constant disappointment. After pouting like a sore loser, Monokuma continued to speak in his usual tone. But you guys will be back. And when that time comes, I'll invite you guys to a wonderful place. I found about I found out about this fun island while I was running things here. <laughs> Monokuma's laughter filled the air before the static finally cut out and his remains fell silent. He wouldn't be talking again anytime soon. The mastermind was already preparing a new despair to bring to the world and to the students of Hope Speak Academy, Junko included. In the end, the mastermind stayed in her Monokuma persona until the very end, and Junko Onishima never showed her face again. It was as if she resented the despair Mokuro had given her. That thought almost filled Mokuro with despair, but when she heard her classmates calling for her, she sealed that despair into the depths of her heart. From now on, she would only seal she would seal away from now on she would seal away all her despair. And one day, when she can give Junko the perfect despair, she'll unleash all the despair she stored and plunge with her and plunge with her sister into a dark abyss. I won't leave my little sister alone. In the end, that was the first hope the disappointing older sister had felt since she was a child. Several hours later, main entrance. Mukuro, are you really going to wear, go out wearing that wig? After receiving a blood transfusion of the correct blood type, Makoto was beginning to show signs of recovering. Mukuro, holding her wig to disguise herself as Junko Nishima, nodded. If I live as Junko, I might be able to understand her better. Despite that, Mukuro's voice still sounded like her own, as if she hadn't fully decided yet. Yeah, well, hasn't fully, fully decided, and I've made up my mind. While I'm out there, I've decided I'll accept everyone's hatred toward me, and toward Junko. I can't die until I've destroyed all the despair that Junko has spread. The damage that ultimate despair inflicted upon the world could not be measured in terms of money, culture, or even human life. Television broadcasts had already begun informing people that Junko Onishima and Mukuro Ikusaba were the heart of ultimate despair. Among the survivors in the outside world, there are still people who hadn't been tainted, tainted by despair yet. Regardless of the fact that she released Makoto and the others to these, uh, Makoto and the others to these survivors, she was nothing more than the reason the world ended. And to the terrorists wearing Monokuma masks who continued to ravage the world, Mukuro was nothing but a traitor. She was now in the hopeless situation of being enemies with most of humanity. But Mukuro wasn't making a big deal out of it. I'm going to try not to kill anyone who comes after me for revenge. Wouldn't it be safer to just turn yourself in, wondered Yasuhiro? Well, you might just get executed instead. But you could live to be an old lady if your trial keeps getting pushed back. Mukuro slowly shook her head at Yasuhiro. Laws, justice, these things no longer exist. I is it really that bad out there? Maybe we should just stay in here. Yakio glared at Yasuhiro with contempt. Ignorant idiots should just shut up. Your fate won't change whether you stay in here or not. Though he was shocked to learn the Togami Corporation had been destroyed. Byakuya continued to remain firm and proud, even toward Mukuro. You are a rare asset, continued Byakuya, so I will let you live for now. Depending on your actions, I may consider forgiving your crimes after I have built a new world. Only a Togami would boast that they're capable of forgiving the crime of ending the world. You don't need to do that. I don't plan on just surviving. After turning away from Byakuya, Mukuro looked at the other students. Everyone was, re was reacting in their own way. Kyoko had a look of quiet preparation. Toko, having just changed back from Genocide Jack, was pa panicked and confused. Mukuro looked back on the two years she spent with them, then turned to Makoto, who shared the same memories as her, and gave him the escape button. Makoto, you press it. Huh? Me? I think it's better if you press it instead of me. As she watched Makoto accept the button with some hesitation, Mukuro thought about what Monokuma had said. You guys will be back. Mukuro knew that Monokuma was telling the truth. After all, the file the students needed to fully restore their lost memories remained hidden in the academy. The research notes of Yas Yasuke Matsuda, the ultimate neurologist, 
His research is the key to restoring everyone's memories. Even if the students no longer have their memories, they may be able to repair the bonds they had built among themselves over the past two years. But as long as their memories remain unrestored, the mastermind could still repeat her deadly plan. Although the island mentioned earlier sounded strange, the students could not turn their backs on the despair facing them. Then, let's go. Makoto remembered everything that was happening in the outside world. The boy who had chosen to remain inside the academy two years ago was now choosing to leave. How much did he struggle to come to that decision? But he was determined to face the despair awaiting him outside and hid his internal conflict from the others. By protecting Makoto's hope, Mokuro would bring despair to her beloved sister, but she no longer knew if the, the end result of her goal would lead to hope or despair. She pulled the wig over her head and hid her face with her hands. Was she smiling because hope was waiting for her, or was she crying because her path would lead to despair? When she lowered her hands, her face was devoid of all emotion. Mokuro no longer knew what expression she should wear on her face. She would wear on her face. At the same time, Makoto pressed the escape button. A siren began to wail as the turrets retra retracted into the ceiling. From beyond the heavy door, a bright light appeared. An infinite, an infinite number of ifs and all the possibilities contained therein encased the world. Accepting everything, hope, despair, and even the feelings of that disappointing girl, Mukuro Kusaba. All right, we did it. We got to the end and we get a trophy for finishing that. Uh, it's called What a Novel Idea. Uh, yes, let's save our changes over here. Okay, so now um, I'm going to end the episode. I just wanted to check a few things quickly. So did we collect? No, we didn't. So, oh, that's not good. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. I just realized what that was. <laughs> I was like, hang on a second, what did I miss? No, I didn't miss anything. Um, it actually, I just realized as well earlier today, uh, you don't actually need all of these to get the, the platinum for this version of the game. Uh, you do need it for the original version versions of the game. Um, which is good for people who are using this for those versions. Uh, but yeah, this one here will be unlocked when we complete um, Magical Girl Monomy, so don't worry about that. The movie one, uh, let's see, go this, this, and this one here, Goodbye Despair Everyone New, or Good Despair Everyone New, uh, only occurs when, um, it's the, the thing we literally just saw, the video that we literally just saw. Artwork, oh yeah, I still have to buy all these, so I can buy all these later. And sound, did I buy? I think I bought all the sound. The day before the future. Argument heat up 8 bit. And class trial. Dang and Rampa. Okay, that's it. Alright, cool. Uh, so we've, did, we've done all that. I'm going to save my changes. Next time, we're going to start the Magical Girl Monomy. And I don't know how long this will take. Uh, I'm going to try and... I, I actually am not 100% sure exactly how I'm going to record it either. Um, because it will get boring inevitably. But um, I'll try and think of something to to make it interesting. Um, but yeah, we'll do that next time. And then eventually we'll work on island mode where we will, we can eventually finish the game. Once and for all. <laughs> but for now, I do want to thank you all for watching episode 134 of Let's Platinum Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair. My name is Ultima456. You're the Ultimates. And I'll see you next time.